God, and we praise you, O God. God, we magnify and glorify, O God, your holy name, O God, on tonight, O God. And, Lord God, we welcome you, O God, into this place, O God. And God, I'm asking, O God, that you would just have your way, O God, on tonight, O God. God, O God. God, I'm asking, O God, that you would increase, O God. Lord God, that you would speak to us, O God, in the mighty name of Jesus, O God. Lord God, that your point will be proven, O God. Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, O God, I pray. Amen. 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 How y'all doing tonight? Good. 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 Good to see you laughing and smiling. Because it's about to go downhill from here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to with you. But tonight I'm going to wrap up talking about spiritual gifts. Because I know the, um, the women's conference is coming up this week. And they want to go into a new topic and then can be a break from that. Is that okay? So, the one gift that we will be talking about tonight is the gift from whom all the others come from. The Holy Ghost. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Got a few little points I'm making and I'm going to get out of your way. Everybody enjoying their shade, guys? Hallelujah. You know that's over. Yes, yes, yes. You live in Bob Cook. I'm going to get you another one. You ain't got to have home. All right. I'll be coming from Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Easy one to sing about it earlier. <laughs> and when they came together, he gave them this order. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift I told you about. The gift my father promised. John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So, write down this word, paraclete. P-A-R-A-C-L-E-T-E. Paraclete. And it means advocate. Advocate, helper, advocate, helper, comforter, intercessor, and that word is referred to the Holy Ghost, the paraclete. The word, um, the prefix P-A-R-A -A means alongside or beside. So we get therapy from the Holy Ghost. Now I'm gonna give like seven points of things that the Holy Spirit comes with because like the, the last two weeks we were discussing, you know, the manifestation or the operation of the Holy Ghost, like the outward things that He does, you know, prophesy and words of wisdom and Words of wisdom and concerning the spirits of that, the outward, the outwardly manifestation, miracle of the Holy Ghost. But now we'll talk about a few things that the Holy Ghost brings you inwardly. 
because there are a few things that, that he does anyway. One of the things is he, point one is, guides us into all truth. The Holy Ghost guides us into all truth. And we can find that in John 16 and 13. John 16 and 13 says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, but he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. And when it comes to the Holy Ghost leading us into all truth, sometimes it seems as being prophetic people, the only truth that we think the Holy Ghost shows us is about other people. And when it comes to him leading, into, leading us into the spirit of truth, that includes the truth about us. Okay? The Holy Ghost, it says it lead, leads us into all truth, so it's a, the it's a truth about, if you have any questions about anything, the Holy Ghost will answer. Our God speaks. And I was, and I was like studying this. Um, God brought up the point of like what conviction is, and He basically brought it, broke it down to me. He said, "Conviction is just the contradiction of truth." Now we have the spirit of all truth living inside of us, and when we act contrary to the spirit of truth, is when you get conviction. but we can't overlook the truth about us. Because it's easy to get up and tell everybody, tell people what you think they should do or how to put their life together, and you be looking like, well, but yours is in general. Right? Now, if the Holy Ghost leads us into all truth, then that means that the first person the Holy Ghost should be able to speak to us about is ourselves. That's what I say, like that. The, the gifts of the Spirit aren't just for outward working, they're for inward working too. Amen. And then some people would debate, you know, that uh, speaking in tongues is the evidence of you having the Holy Ghost. And the more I study this thing, the evidence of having the Holy Ghost is transformation. Amen. <laughs> okay? So we got that bullet point. The second one is it teaches us all things. And we can find this in John 14 and 26. The Holy Ghost teaches us all things. And this comes from the Passion Translation. But when the Father sends the Spirit, the one like me, who sets you free, he will teach you all things in my name. And he will inspire you to remember every word that I've told you. You've ever been in a been in a situation, a tough situation, and the Holy Ghost brings something back to your remembrance that God told you, or a scripture that 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 is perfect for the situation. That's because the Holy Ghost knows all things. And one of the uh, in one of the um, situations that like they use, that was like, have you ever seen somebody who you will see one a person that's up teaching and rightly dividing the word, but they've never been to school for it. The Holy Ghost can teach you everything that you need to know. Because if the Holy Ghost knows all things, who's better to learn from? Amen. Who's better to learn from than the one that knows all? Because when you go to school to learn, like they teach you their version of the truth. Come on. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Ghost teaches you the truth. There's no versions of the truth when it comes from God. It's just the truth. Amen. So the Holy Ghost teaches us. It, he guides us into all truth, and he teaches us all truth. And the thing is, the Holy Ghost doesn't want you to be ignorant about anything. And the wisdom of the Holy Ghost isn't just confined to preaching and prophesying. Amen. The Holy Ghost has been around for a long time. He's been around since the beginning. He know a lot of something about everything. Amen. All right. The next 
next point, point three, is he empower, empowers us with inner strength. And this can be found in Ephesians 3, verses 16 and 17. Empowers us with inner strength. And the scripture says, and I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. 17 says, then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside of you and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. The Holy Ghost strengthens our inner being in times when we are weak. He's the comforter. He sticks closer than a brother. Whatever you need to know, whatever, whenever you need direction, or whenever you feel like you're lost, that you know you don't know which way to go, which way to turn, ask the Holy Ghost. And I think that often the, the relationship with the Holy Ghost is overlooked. Amen. So true. The, the relationship with the Holy Ghost is overlooked because it's the gifts of the Holy Ghost that are being sought after. Absolutely. Like I want to prophesy, like I want to be <laughs> seen. But the but the relationship with the Holy Ghost will never lead you wrong. So what do you mean? When I was in the setting, I was like, oh God, I'm shrinking my relationship with the Holy Ghost. Because whether you never say a word or whether you never prophesy, the Holy Ghost will lead you to love people right. Amen. Because as you read the Bible, that is the greatest gift that God wants us to possess. That is the evidence of God in our lives is how we love people. Amen. It ain't what I get up and tell you your future, your past, or what are you doing now. It's what if I show you the love of Christ. Amen. And the Holy Ghost renews us inwardly when, when we need it. It produces godly fruits in our hearts. And we all know what this one is. Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Now, if this is a characteristic that comes with the Holy Ghost, how does prophecy overlook that? Like, how does prophecy surpass that? You know, because it because the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and these come these gifts come with the Holy Spirit. These characteristics come with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Being prophetic does not negate that. Amen. Because as we see that these, this is, before we prophesy, this is the groundwork. That's right. Before we get up and tell anybody, thus saith the Lord, the fruits of the Spirit are the groundwork. Amen. Now, if the fruits of the Spirit are the, is the cake, then the, the gifts of the Spirit is the icing. Amen. And them two working together is a powerful combination. I can love you whether I say the Lord told me. Amen. The first thing that the Lord told me to do was to love you. Whether I prophesy to you or not. Just even in the natural, as we eat fruit, there was something in fruit called antioxidants. Amen. And they fight against what is called free radicals. Free radicals, the big and the short of it, damage your cells. And if your cells take enough damage, it begins to weaken your immune system. Mm -hmm. So these fruits that the Holy Spirit gives fight against the free radicals that come against our lives. And we can get, they can be so strong in our lives that we can appear to be immune to everything that is thrown at us. If we let them operate. Because some people can prophesy, but they can't say hi to you. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> they can tell you everything that's going on in your life, but then turn around and treat you like crap at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's an imbalance. 
I want to be able to love you whether I tell you what the Lord, whatever I even prophesy to you or not, I should be able to love you first. Because if I love you, then you, you'll want to hear what I have to say or hear what the Lord has to say to you. Because there are so many people that, you know, have turned people off in the name of being a prophet, and these people never come back to church. You can prophesy to me, but you can't love me. And the Bible says, with love and kindness have I drawn me. That, that's what God uses to get you here. But he didn't get you here for us to tear you apart. Amen. So again, the fruit of the Spirit is the groundwork. All of this comes just with being indwelled by the Holy Ghost. Before he moves you to tell somebody something else, he should be able to speak to us directly. You know? Because when you go too far, the Holy Ghost will let you know. I don't think that was right. <laughs> and if you need to apologize, he will tell you to go in. He will tell you to fix situations. And before you even get to tear up the situation, you're like, hey, don't say that. Mm -hmm. like, hey, don't do that. Bullet mm -hmm. point number five. The Holy Ghost freely gives spiritual gifts. Now, this is after your love and your joy and your peace and your long suffering. Then we get to think of prophesying, discerning the spirits, and all of, all of that stuff. But loving right is first. <laughs> and you know, we've already discussed the fruits of the, the spiritual gifts. All right, bullet point number six says, the Holy Ghost helps us in our weaknesses. And that can be found in Romans 8 and 26. And this is also from the Passion Translation. Romans 8 and 26 says, and in a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty to empower us in our weakness. For example, at times we don't even know how to pray or know the best things to ask for, but the Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional sighs too deep for words. Have you ever been in a situation where something is happening to you before God and you just like, I don't, I don't even know what to say? I don't, even, I don't even know words to put together to express to you how I feel about this situation. Well, the beautiful thing about that is with the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, he can automatically translate that feeling to God. Amen. Whether you moaning, humming, or crying, God knows exactly how you feel. Automatically, he helps, he strengthens us, he'll pick us up in those times. And even there, there are some times where you can just pray and come. God understands that. But the Holy Ghost will strengthen you when you're weak. And you'll be there when, that, when no one else is. Always with the word. Always leading us into the truth. Always giving direction. Point number seven, the Holy Ghost will lead us in every part of our lives. And that one ties in to bullet point number one, that he leads us into all truth. Because as I was saying, as I was saying before, the Holy Ghost isn't limited to just the church. He, he can lead you in the marketplace. He can tell you 
not to get involved with somebody you may have been thinking about getting involved with. But the Holy Ghost knows all things. He knows all things. And some things you just black out. Like, I, the Holy Ghost, I don't want to answer on this. It's not like you don't try. But we can always override or ignore it. But the Holy Ghost is always there. And he can lead us in each and every, each and every area of our lives. All we got to do is ask. That's what the Bible says. Have not because you ask not. Empowers us to witness. And this can be found in Acts 1 and 8. Empowers us to witness. Acts 1 and 8 says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. No matter where you go on the face of this earth, the Holy Ghost is there. Amen. Amen. No matter where you go on the face of this earth, the Holy Ghost is there, and he will give you the words and the power to be a witness for God. Amen. No matter. No matter where you go, he's there. And the scripture says that there's no way you can go to hell and the Holy Ghost will still find you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no height, no depth. Amen. There's no way that you can run that the Holy Ghost can't come find you. But no matter what situation, no matter what circumstance that you find yourself in, the Holy Ghost is there and will empower you to be a witness and to show you how to show people how to ride this thing out with God. Because in a lot of situations, we'll be the only version of the Bible that people will see. Right. Oh. And we can show them how to stand. And can do it with a smile and we can do it in love. Because sometimes we have to remember, like, we're not the only people that have things happening to us. Amen. We're not the only people. And that's the one thing the enemy seems to, seems to get us with isolation. The enemy can isolate us so easy that we feel like we're the only person that's ever experienced this. When Ecclesiastes clearly said that there is nothing new under the sun. Whatever you're going through, whatever I'm going through, somebody else is already experiencing it. And that situation could be way worse than somebody else. That's right, that's right. So in the words of Michael Jackson, you are not alone. <laughs> you are not alone. We have a paraclete. We have someone that is Hallelujah. called to walk alongside us. Amen? Amen. And this, this one thing we didn't get to talk about earlier is Joel chapter 2 verse, verse 28. We touched on it briefly and this is about dreams and visions. And the scripture says, and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Now, the Bible clearly says that it's your sons and your daughters. So how people can say women aren't called to preach, I don't know how they are, because prophesying is preaching. Come on. Yeah. Prophesying is preaching, and the Bible clearly says your sons and your daughters. There's never been a male daughter. Never. No matter if you was born one day and trying to change your later, there's still <laughs> never been a male daughter. <laughs> it says your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Mm -hmm. Now when it comes to these dreams, the Hebrew word for dream is kalom. And it's C-H-A. C-H-A-L-O-M. And it means appearance. Mirror, vision, appearance, mirror, vision, revelation. Appearance, 
hearing, hearing, vision, revelation. The Hebrew word for vision is chazon, C-H-A-Z-O-N, C-H-A-Z-O-N, and it means evidence. Visualization, evidence, visualization, outlook, aspect, and oracle. And when it comes to when it comes to dreams, dreams have uh, manifested to many people in the Bible in different ways. Um, there has been dreams that have come in warning. Sometimes you can have a dream and it's, it's a warning. Like in the book of Genesis, I think it's uh, chapter 20, where uh, Abraham and Sarah are appear before King Abimelech, and he tells the king that Sarah is his sister when she's really his wife. And because, you know, the king was looking at him, he had a thing for him. But when he told him that, you know, he had thoughts of Sarah, but the Lord warned the king, like, no, 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 don't do that. So that dream came in the form of a warning. Uh, dreams can also be instructional. And God can give you detail by detail of what to do, how to do, where to go, what to put together, how to develop something, how to direct something. That can happen in the dream as well. Because for some, for some people, they need to be sweet or they need to be quiet for God to really talk. And they can all, there's also prophetic dreams that are of the future or of things to come. Everything that we discussed about uh, two weeks ago, about the word of knowledge, or, all of that can happen in a dream. And the difference between a dream and a vision is a dream in your sleep. In a vision, That's what I have for you on tonight. And I do want to speak to the Lord about making this a little more interactive because I do want, you know, feedback from y'all. If there's something that you want to know more about, like tell me so it's a class. Like need to know what you need to know. So even on the spiritual gifts, like is there any questions about anything or give me some feedback <laughs> to learn anything?
So we're going to see and we're going to make sure that we learn something in the class on today. And that's how I'm going to call the puzzle game. And then just come and tell me what you learned. Amen. Let's start with Mr. Donnie. I learned that the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, can speak for me with God when I'm not sure what I want to say or how to say it. And I also learned that I need to be more aware of the Holy Spirit and build a better relationship because that will help me to understand when I'm hearing from God and not the Holy Spirit. <coughs> journey.
with the dreams uh, and the visions. Uh, I have uh, now I have a better understanding of my dreams and my visions. the Holy Ghost, you know, for help if I need help. He's a gentleman who, you know, we got the accent. He's a, and he'll come alongside us. Well, I'll keep <laughs> Sometimes that happens to me a lot when I know I I should pray, but I really am like, well, God, I don't have the words. Um, so now I know what to do. Just pray in the spirit, and then the Holy Ghost will give it to me. So. Prophet Tariq. Spirit. One thing about it, um, as Oversay was teaching us, to let us know we get a better understanding. Uh, he went through the gift. We get a better understanding what the Holy Ghost is, how the Holy Ghost works with us, how the Holy Ghost is always there. And to now let us know to take advantage of the Holy Ghost and uh, get a close relationship with the Holy Ghost. And then uh, he said that the Holy Ghost will lead us into all truth. And like I said, a lot of things we don't understand. All we do is just seek the Holy Ghost. And a lot of times the Holy Ghost is trying to talk to us and let us know different things. And a lot of times, like we might say, we might be too busy. So all the time we can speak to us when we have a dream or when we went to sleep. But if we would take the quiet time and just sit there and just meditate, and then the Holy Spirit will come to you and start speaking to you and just start leading you and guiding you and let you know. Close your eyes. You don't have to say this. You don't have to do this. And he will lead you to all truth. I thank God for learning now to have a relationship with the Holy Ghost more so. Okay. Thank you for the teaching. Great job. the seven, actually eight points, you know, about the Holy Spirit, you know, we should tune into him. We got to hear what he is saying to us. Amen. And as he said, you know, we go to school to learn some things and, you know, we get the point of the instructor. Amen. But when we should always tune our ear into the Holy Spirit so that we get the truth from the original and the supreme instructor. Amen. He'll bring us into all truth. He'll teach us the things that we don't know. He'll give us understanding. You know, the Bible says, you know, if you feel like you want wisdom or you need wisdom, to ask, and God will give it to you liberally. He said the upgrade or not. He doesn't, he doesn't hold back. You know, if you want it, he'll give it to you. 
you know, you got to get into a relationship with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is going to lead you. He's going to maneuver you around the enemy. He'll tell you, you know, don't go down that street today. You know, uh, he also said that if you'll, gain, you'll gain the fruits of the Spirit from the Holy Spirit. If you learn to let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you, he'll teach you how to love. He'll teach you how to understand. He'll teach you how to give an open ear and an open heart to someone else. Amen. As he was teaching, I was I, that Brian McKnight song had came to me, you know, one, one, two, three. Yeah, they okay. said, you start back at one. I, I did, uh, did all of what you thought was, and everything <laughs> felt like it was done. You started back at one. Yes. Because you gotta, you, you should always be open to receive from God. You know, as he said, you know, you gotta be able to hear when God is speaking to you about you. Amen. It's not always about everybody and everything else. God speaks to you about you because he wants to get you in order and set you in line first. Because if you can be in line, then everything else can be in line. Amen. So God is God is maneuvering us. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman, but he wants us. He, he's there for us. Amen. That we can make it and that we can be in a position to be able to reach out to other people, to be able to draw in other people. Amen. And so we do. We have to get our relationship right with the Holy Spirit and speak to him. Seek. You know, when you see God, you talk to the Holy Spirit. Hey, you know, how, how do we do this? Or what do we do about that? You know, and you'll begin to, as uh, I believe as Minister Joy said, you'll begin to understand and to know that voice more clearly. Amen. Because you need to know the Holy Spirit's voice clearly. Amen. So that he can operate you. He can maneuver you around the enemy and he can maneuver you into a place where you can receive that which he has for you. Amen. So never think that, you know, the gifts of the spirit or uh, the prophecy, the prophetic, the, you know, the vocals and all those, those gifts and those skills, you know, is just all that it is. You know, you got to be able to hear when God is trying to tell you something. Amen. Amen. So whenever you believe your work is done, start back at one. God, talk to me again. What do I need to know? Because it's a daily walk. It's a daily thing. And we got to know what God is saying. Amen. To us. Amen. So again, thank you for the word, son. Appreciate it. Amen. And at this time, I'm going to turn it to the hands of our chief apostle. Amen. 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 Let us stand as we receive. Amen. Amen. <laughs> judges us. And so I think that's what that's why we don't have the relationship with the Holy Spirit. We don't speak with the Holy Spirit. And Lashon Pace has been teaching on that for years about the Holy Spirit being her best friend. And so you have to you have to learn and he walks with me and he talks with me. It doesn't say that he is, but it's supposed to be the Holy Spirit and Jesus and God. Amen. You're supposed to have all of heaven backing you. Amen. Hallelujah. And so uh, once we get that the Holy Spirit doesn't just want to discipline us, but he wants to, to, to hold us in the midnight hour, uh, we will feel better about approaching the Holy Spirit, about concerning being friends with the Holy Spirit. Um, I, don't, I didn't understand uh, the... the, the the comment concerning familiar spirits. Uh, familiar spirits, as, as if you mean the angel of light speaking a false word or giving a false instruction, that's different. 
than a familiar spirit, okay? That pertains to a lot of occultish and, and other things. So I want to make sure, you know, know we're, we're taught right. And even the scripture he mentioned, it was Genesis 12. And we, talk, we talked about that. But he's talking about the inward manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Simply because we believe the Holy Spirit in this day and age. Y'all might be just trying to let that for me. <laughs> um, when we talk about, you can get more in here. Maybe that will be enough. Um, when we talk about the Holy Spirit, or whenever we see the Holy Spirit in operation, it is always either us dancing and, and the Holy Spirit, because we can dance and still talk about one another. We can dance and still rip each other apart. We can dance and still be in competition. We can dance and still be mean. And so we believe that the Holy Spirit is equated to us dancing and speaking in tongues, but before all of that, the commandment is love ye one another. Amen. That's the commandment first. And for all the tongue talkers who are mean to people, uh, you need to be, you, the Holy Spirit should convict you about your ways. Amen. The Holy Spirit doesn't, you know, the, the, the church needs a balance. You understand what I'm saying? The church needs a balance, and I think that's where our fight is because we don't have a balance. Amen. I can't cut you and, 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 and be cutthroat with you and then expect the Holy Spirit to now give me a word. And we're preaching on top of a lot of mess. Amen, church. Amen. And it's the truth because when you look at some of these people who say that they are prophets and they are preaching, they are extremely nasty. You, you, got, you got a lot of junk in your spirit and you bleed that onto the people as you preach it in the name of being a wonder, but you are not a wonder and it's not of God. Amen. Amen. That's why I don't have to, the folks can say what they want to say about the church, but that's why I don't have everybody here because you can have a great name out there, but this is a different kind of church and you will not come in and call my people stupid and all this kind of things that we have seen prophets do. You will not, you won't get to, you, you, it'll be a one and done. You won't finish that sermon here. Because I'm going to put you out. Even the fake Juanita Bynum that the folk that you see in the women and them preaching so hard. I will put you out so that you are not going to come here and destroy the people in the sake of being, uh, of, of impressing your entourage. Because we see a lot of that in the prophet. Well, I'm going to preach hard like this. They better not, because you know, and y'all know God is really speaking through me. And it don't mean God is really speaking through you. It means you're being nasty. It means you're being mean. The first thing is the fruit of the Spirit. You need the fruit of the Spirit. You need to love on people because the prophet is to point us to di into directions. That's, that's why they're the pointing finger, right? They're, so, they're always pointing us in a direction. And it's not this this. It's this. Because you can be a prophet and be kind, and you can be a prophet and encourage. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because exhortation is a part of that. Edification is a part of that. And so those are things that we need. Amen. Amen. Doesn't mean that you will never have to be sharp. It doesn't mean, but you ain't sharp all day long, 24-7, and can't nobody say nothing to you, and you can't, you can't receive. See, prophets, and let me help you, you need a leader. You need somebody that can get in your junk when, when, when your junk is all over the place. You need a leader. You're a son of the house, and it shouldn't be competition between you and the pastor. Amen. The pastor say something and you go to teach something else behind his back. That's not God. Amen. Because the first person about that God speaks to is the pastor. He ain't, he ain't, he ain't. We have made this thing about the gifts and not about the gift giver. And so because we honor uh, the creations more than the creator, that's why we have so many famous preachers. Because we honor gifting more than we honor the gift giver, but every good and perfect gift comes from above. Mm -hmm. That God gives that big. I don't care how famous you are, God gave you what you got. And all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, and all the credit ought to go back to God. I don't hear you here. Yeah. I think I'm talking right. Yeah. Amen. And that's the truth. Yeah. 
And we, we, we see that. And we have accepted prophets because this is, a, this is a people of itchy ears. We have accepted prophets who we have seen error. We have accepted them and welcomed them back. And no, 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 no. Get yourself together for you prophesy again. Come on. And now the prophets are pastoring. And, and Lord. Yeah. And so what happens is when it comes to the inward manifestations of the Holy Spirit, we're, 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 we're strong on the outer because we won't let the Holy Spirit do the work in us. Because that's not what the people need to see. The people need to see that I go forth. No. What you go forth in is what goes on behind closed doors between you and God. That's what you go forth in. You do not go forth, you know, it, the gifts is not it. And, and this is a people nowadays who are so stuck on the gifts that they don't, they don't care what the folks is doing. They, they just, well, they, God really used them and they gave you a word. And you can get your own word. Because the Holy Spirit leads and guides into all truth, right? You can get your own word, but because we won't get, we won't spend enough time before God to get our own words, we have now become uh, 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 dependent. We've become spiritually dependent on prophets, and the and, and the church are word junkies, and we're word junkies, but we won't obey the word. We're word junkies, but we won't read the word. But let somebody say, you know, you sister in the dark script. In the dark shirt, come up, God's got a word for you. We come running up, oh, I'm getting a word, right? <laughs> but ain't, it been, ain't been in our Bible, ain't been before God. We just dressed up uh, uh, to look our best to, to come and, and to be and to be before a man. Because we don't, we, a lot of times folks do all these conferences and they, they leave the same way they came. They pay all that money to hear men, but they would not hear God. And that's what makes conferences so dangerous nowadays. Because all oh, such and such gonna be, I'm going. Oh, such and such gonna be. What about God being there? What happened to God being at the conference? What? Oh my God, Lord Jesus. Woo woo! So that one, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so we go, we look at the lineup and we, oh, I'm going this day, I'm going that day. Oh, you know, they're going to be there. They do in the morning manner and, and all this. And we go to all of this stuff. We ain't got permission from our leader to go. We everywhere. And that's what happens. Oh, God, this, this person going to be there. We go there and give, and give big, big time. And then when it comes to our church, we don't have anything to give. And that's terrible. You know, so, oh, no, I'm, I'm with this person. I'm a partner with, how are you a partner somewhere else and you're not a partner to your own house? The Holy Spirit should let you know, hey, this is what you, you. Prophet Terrell Turner says, so will you grow. Produces godly fruit, and so and so and so we're supposed to have the love, the joy, and the peace. We're not supposed to have nasty spirits as prophets, and that's not complaining about the church is not preaching about the church. Amen. Because we see a lot of that too, and the gifts are free. So why we make people pay for them? I don't know. The gifts are free. Why are we charging people? The gifts are free. Why are we charging people? Personal prophecy costs money. And, and this, if, if, I mean, can we do anything for free nowadays? I'm just asking. Can we do anything for free nowadays? It's, if, I, if I pray, I'm going to post my cash out. If I go on to talk, I'm going to post my cash out. Something has to now be done because we're getting, okay, I, I heard you ramble, but why do now, I, I now owe $50 because you just rambled off something. And the church is so blind that they don't see it. Well, I have my picks and chooses of who I like. And so if they, if they talk, 
And I'm going to solve them. They don't have to really say anything. But the people, preachers understand how to uh, manipulate people's feelings. You watch some of this Facebook stuff and some of this stuff like God didn't say you on here. Praise God. Hallelujah. But you watch some of it. Some of it is really just manipulation and someone twisting what you want to hear. The Holy Spirit teaches you and you're supposed to, you're supposed to know when to disagree because you can't say amen to everything. Amen means so be it. Let it be so unto you, unto me. And so you have to be careful what you amen to too when folks are preaching. They say, y'all don't have to like me and I... We have to love you. You're right. God called me to walk in this space, and it don't matter what. I'm... None of that is called for. None of it. Give the word. Sit down. Give the word and sit down. Remember prophets. Remember pastors, apostles, teachers, evangelists, ministers. Say to every you are that are preaching, remember Moses didn't make it in because of what he said to the children of Israel. God ain't gonna let you just talk to his people in the old kind of way. Amen. Now that's the Bible. It certainly is. He did not go into the promised land because of his mouth. You make the people miss the miracles of God by you by, by being so much of you, by being so much of your flesh going forth. And the people miss God. Mm -mm. So it empowers us to witness. So please, the Holy Spirit empowers us to witness. We got some more chairs to fill up. Amen. Now the thing is about the Holy Spirit will lead us in every part of, in every part of our lives. See, the Holy Spirit is more than just we, because we, that's how it's been preached for so long, that the Holy Spirit is just what we do at the church. Mm -mm. You ought to be standing in line at ShopRite or in a store and God say, pay for this person's food. They really don't have it. Sometimes God will tell you to do that. And, 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 but, but just for, if, you're, if you're open to the Holy Spirit, because those are things that I like to do. If you like to do it, God will. If you like sowing, God will, God will make sure you continue to sow. Amen. And so sometimes you could, you could be at the fish market and, and, and say, you know, uh, let me pay for this person's food. You don't know what they're dealing with. You don't know what God, uh, you know, what, why God told you to do it, but you just do it. See, the Holy Spirit leads you to do more than just preach. God will the Holy Spirit will say, take that job, don't take that one. The Holy Spirit will say, don't trust that one. Watch them. The Holy Spirit will deal with you and he'll minister to you and he'll talk to you because that's his desire. If he is the gifts of seeing, hearing, and knowing, then when, when you release him, he does amazing things for you. And he tells you, and the Holy Spirit tells you even when, as, as Canton Jones said, when you can't find your keys, the Holy Spirit will tell you where your keys are. If you ask him, you have to make use of him. Any muscle that you don't use, you lose. Amen? And so you have to continue to exercise your rights and your authority in the Holy Spirit. Um, and so he helps our infirmities. You know, he helps us uh, tunnel through. And see, the thing is, I was saying that is the problem. And, and, and pray for leading. That's one of the great... At church, if, if I don't pray for nothing else, lead me, guide me, direct me, instruct me, uh, Holy Spirit. Synchronize my heart with yours so that my heart doesn't be out of step. All of those things, I'm telling you, they work wonders. Those little prayers. It don't have to be a whole long night, Emma, or Shemalong night, whatever it is. M. Night Shemalong or whoever that is, it don't, it don't have to be. Those simple little prayers have taken me through major things. Lead me, guide me, direct me, instruct me. Synchronize our hearts. Those tiny little prayers that don't seem like they mean much mean everything. And so the other thing is, like I was saying, prophets need uh, leaders. They need someone to sit in. Because you don't know it all because you're a prophet. 
The Holy Spirit does. You don't know it all because you're a prophet. And so when we become independent, that's something God has never called anybody to. Women nor men. Amen. Sorry, Bianca. All the women that's independent, you're out of order. God never called us to be I'm telling you what I know. He didn't call me to be independent, and he didn't call you to be independent. Amen. And that's the truth. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We need God. Amen. We need Jesus. And so when we become so independent that we don't need leaders because you ask some people, who is your pastor? While you're out here traveling and, and who's your overseer? Who's looking? Who, who's praying you through? Well, a lot of people didn't understand my ministry and so God told me to do it. You see that so much. The same God that said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. You're under governors and tutors until the appointed time told you, you don't need a leader. There are apostles who have, who have chief apostles as coverings, and God told you, you don't need a leader. That's how we get so many rogue agents operating in the church. I was surprised to hear that so many gospel singers don't have gospel pastors. How do you sing the gospel without a preacher? How can they hear without a preacher? Somebody has got to be able to tell you something. You've got to be able to hear from somebody because you need to be, you need to pray for leading and then you need, how are you doing what God has called you to do? Is God really pleased with what, with the work that you do in his name and in your leader's name? You know, those things are very, very important because if you just there tearing up churches, because there's some people that they tear up churches, they tear down churches. Amen. With that Jezebel spirit. And their control freaks. And I need the church to start when I need the church to start. And I, I that's the Jezebel spirit. If you're not the leader, when you're in Rome, you do as the Romans do. And so we see so many other things of, of in, in the prophetic ministry, but I want us to be taught right. Because I don't want us being prophets out there operating in error and being mean and angry. And, and just some, some of the things you hear about are just so foolish. You know, it's important for us to get the teaching while it's free. Amen. Prophetic company may not always be free. Who knows? Because you got to pay for this everywhere else. And prophetic schools don't take the, don't take the place of reading your Bible nor having a leader. Amen. 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 And that is the truth. We need a leader. A lot of the things that we are seeing happen is because folks aren't getting, they're not listening to their leaders. Amen. Amen. Your leader is still important. Amen. And pastors, if you're watching those who are discouraged because you have a people who are self-serving and self-seeking, God will, God, God will deliver you. Amen. Amen. Because there's somebody who's going to want to hear your word. Amen. Now, so many rogue agents that can't go to church, can't be a part of anybody's church, can't nobody tell you nothing, and you always want to talk about how the Holy Spirit is leading you. The Holy Spirit leading you everywhere but to the church. The Lord thy God rebuke you in the name of Jesus. How did the Holy Spirit, because then that, then that means the Holy Spirit is contrary. He's contrary to the will of God because you're supposed to have a witness. And how we are doing so much with no leader, with no pastor, I just don't, un I don't understand it. Well, I went to school and they ordained me in it. How? How are we doing this? I went to Bible school, I went to theology school, and, I went to, and, and a lot of times it's because they don't have leaders. Because a good leader will know when it's time to ordain people. And that is the truth. 
Go back to the church. Not in this church. You say, oh, no, I'm being held back. And my, I told my pastor I was something, and he didn't get the mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. A good leader will know when it's time to ordain his people. He's not in competition with them because he's too busy blessing them. He's too busy feeding them. He's too busy encouraging. Oh, my God, Lord Jesus. He's too busy encouraging them. And so that's what has to happen. Again, we need more churches like us. Amen. 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 We do. Because sometimes in church, the folks are fighting with one another. They're fighting over titles. They're fighting over, my gosh, it's good to be able to come to a place where we can just sit and be at peace and love on Jesus without worrying the next person who you're going to have to tell off. The worship team ain't fighting and the choir ain't fighting and the apostles ain't seeing how many engagements and all of that, all of those things are happening in the church. Because nobody wants to be led, but everybody wants to lead. A lot of chiefs and no Indians. A lot of chiefs, but no Indians. Amen. But you, you, have, you have to humble yourself. You have to humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. And then he'll exalt you. That's how you know we're, we're man-oriented. We're, we're chasing man and famous men to ordain us and affirm us and make us something. It says, humble yourselves under, and he'll exalt you. He'll exalt you. In due season, God will lift you up. And folks, want, they'll be forced to recognize the God in you. You never have to scrap it and, and claw. And because then people become so angry. And not only that, the worst thing is when they do have a good leader and they get ordained and they become arrogant. There is nothing worse than arrogant students and arrogant teachers and, and, and leaders and, and folks who act superior to everyone else. If I say good morning to you, if you say good morning to me, I'm saying it back. Do you hear what I'm saying? Chief apostle in all, 5,000 churches in all, I'm going to say hi to you. Amen. I'm going to hug you. That, that's just me. That, that, like the Bible said, we're supposed to greet each other with a, with a, with a uh, holy kiss. You understand what I'm saying? Like we're supposed to be embracers, not throwing people away. And we throw so many people away in the church. Simply because they, they can't be let, you let them go. But know that God will do the rescuing. Stop trying so hard to make things happen. You're doing the job of the Holy Spirit and you don't have to. But truthfully, these are things in the, in the church that need to be looked after. They, they need to be taught in other places that the first gifts you need to have is the fruit of the Spirit. Because I can't ordain you if I can't trust you to go across the street and come back. You understand what I'm saying? I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't afford to put my stamp of approval on you. And then we hear you doing this and you're doing that. And you're, I can't afford that. You can't afford that. So we have to be, we have to be a bit more careful. And the prophetic just needs to be reeled in a little bit. They need some, they need some fathers who can speak to some sons and say, hey, listen, that's not the way you should go. And it doesn't mean that people are jealous of you. It doesn't mean that people, because we throw that jealousy thing around. No, you just out of order, baby. <laughs> Ain't nobody jealous of you. Jealous of what? We don't want to operate like that. But we do that a lot. It, you know, they jealous of me. That they don't understand my ministry. Well, they're not at that level. It ain't that many levels. It ain't that, it, it, it ain't that many levels. But we do. We, we, we do those things. And, who has been able to sit down with you and tell you, listen, that part of you stinks and you receive it? That's what you need. That's what you need. Amen. We've all had it. Any good leader will see you going out and, 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 and check you. Hey, come here. And so we need to, we need to be checked. We, we need to be talked to. You be chastised in love. Because you can't want to do all the correction and never get corrected. And that's another issue. So 
here. Thank God for the teaching tonight. There's inward manifestations of the Holy Spirit that need to begin before the outward, and that is the truth. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you.